What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mike's Tool Shed. This is just a little update video. Honestly, I stopped by my mom's house. I drank a Red Bull, and I wanted to talk. And I'm going kind of crazy in the uh, recent weeks. So I'm making a video of just about a couple new bullshit tools that I got. And just a little general update. So uh, first, this guy front and center right here. I got the Milwaukee 6 Bay Sequential Charger. Sequential meaning that it's only going to charge one at a time and there's no rapid charger. This is standard rate charging. It's not going to blow your balls off with speed. It's just like six chargers in one. Um, but when one is completed, it switches to the next one and so on. So set it and forget it. You load them all up, plug it in, walk away and come back several hours later and you have six charged batteries. Instead of trying to rely on maybe a coworker, maybe a coworker is working by the outlet, meaning there's usually only like one or two outlets on some of the jobs because they're new construction. And, uh, hey man, if you see those green, can you swap that? That pile there is dead. Yeah. Can you swap them out? If you see them, yeah, yeah, man, I'll take care of it. You come back three hours later, there's a pile of dead batteries and all the, the lights are green. This, you don't have to worry about it. You just plug them in, come back and they're all done. Um, another really considerate, really, this thing is just such a sweetheart. It, uh, it's got a pass-through plug. Why all chargers don't have this, I don't know. And Milwaukee has done it before. This 28-volt, uh, old old 28-volt charger there that uh, Randy gave me when he retired. Oh, that's cool. I got a new one. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they've done it before, and they did it on this one. But it's just so, it's so like, uh, considerate, like, uh, like I just I just can I just plug in like I'm not even I'm not even gonna take an outlet I'm not even gonna take one up you can plug right into the back of me here it's just nice it's nice it's uh very considerate so it beats the hell out of carrying a bag full of chargers and a bag full of batteries in and having to swap them out or have somebody else try to rely on somebody else um, and then you need to take up multiple plugs or bring your own splitter or somebody sees you you know all the outlets are used but this guy's like who's fucks Mike why is he charging six batteries at the same time? He, I can unplug two of those, you know. You're just, you're not taking up one outlet, and six of them just quietly sit there and charge. So that's going to make my life a lot better. Plus, you can load it up in the van and just walk in the job with it, and you're one-handing the capability of charging six batteries throughout the day. So I might even try to incorporate this. I might even uh, maybe put a mount for it because it does have the eyelet. Maybe put a mount for it in the van there and just keep the charged batteries on it. Use this for charged battery storage. When I take the last one off, load it up with six dead ones or six, the other six, and plug it in again. So I got that. I'm pretty excited about that. Just got that today. This, these are the Crescent, that model number, channel locks, <laughs> slip joint pliers, sorry. But yeah, um, it was this, Honestly, I was going to get the uh, Kanipex, uh, the German-made ones. I don't know if you guys have heard of them. Kanipex uh, makes some really good ones, but they're like 75 bucks for the 14 inches or 250 millimeter, maybe 300. I think they're 300 millimeter. And as badass as those pliers are, I, I really was I was struggling with spending 150 bucks on two pairs of pliers because I do I, I bought two of these. These are only 22 dollars. And have a big ass jaw that goes up to I think four and a half inches, and uh, that's five right there. You could grip something that was five if you had to, um, but I just couldn't justify. I use these for for big compression fittings, and if I've got the pliers for the proper size, then why would I need the you know almost eighty dollar pair? So these just caught my eye. Home Depot, twenty two bucks I think the Channel Lock brand ones were twenty nine dollars, and I was like they're at the end of the day, it's just a big ass pair of pliers. I'm gonna get, try the twenty dollar ones. Um, I know I, the 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 deciding factor is that they have a pressed rivet, and if you have ever had a shitty pair of channel locks or slip joint pliers, and they have a nut and bolt here with a little dabble of Loctite on it, um, you know once that Loctite gets loose, you're in a world of pain. <laughs> you go to you go to open them up and then close it and it just tightens down and you're constantly fiddling with it to try to get it to work but I did appreciate for 22 bucks you get a pressed rivet and it's got the big low tolerance design big ass teeth um, this will just handle the big compression fittings that I have to deal with but they're 
uh, almost the size of my forearm. I just couldn't justify spending 150 bucks on two pair of pliers, so I'm going to try the $20 ones. And I got this. This is the new version 2 Klein uh, Bluetooth radio. And I had the version 1, and I really liked it. But the one thing I started hating about it is that it was not this one, but it this one's USB-C. The other one was micro USB. And I'm trying to convert my whole life to USB-C. And the price was right. Um, I sold my old one immediately and then only had to pay 10 extra bucks to get this one to upgrade the USB-C. It does exactly the same thing. There's functionality wise, it does nothing different than the old one, except that it's USB-C. Both of them have the headphone uh, input. All the buttons are the same, four, four button control. And then you can, these two, it doesn't tell you, but you can skip tracks with these. And then the old one had a big round magnet on the back. And this has got the magnet strap. So the strap magnet is here. So when it's closed, and that's how you clip it like that. When it's closed, you can just stick it to something and it hangs off the magnet here. But then you have options because you can loop, loop this around and snap it. You can't really hang it off much. It's not like you're wrapping that around a pipe or anything. But maybe a wire or something. The option's there. Why not? You can snap it like that, and then you can hang it like on a nail, like that. Um, so it's a little more versatile as far as that goes. It's lower profile. The other one is a smaller square, but it's thick. It's like that thick. But I can attest to that it sounds exactly the same. It's just USB-C. It's got a different magnet, a little more versatile of a strap, and uh, it's thinner. The other one, like I said, it was probably about that thick, so... I like it. it. Like I said, it, it does sound exactly the same, but if you don't have one, um, I think, I don't know if it was on sale, but this was like 30 bucks, and they were selling the old one right next to it for $40. This is a no-brainer, and I unloaded my old one for 20 bucks, so that's it. That's my new tools that I've gotten recently. I got, I got some more stuff coming, um, upgrading a couple things. Uh, upgrading my work van, I'm getting a newer van. I'm going from a 190,000 mile van to a 140,000 mile van. But I know the gentleman that had it before, and he took really good care of it. Uh, someone, you know, beat the balls off of my van before I got in it. So I'll be excited to have not a busted out grill, uh, a giant dent on the side. Um, I'll be excited to have actual knobs on the window cranks. Yeah, I don't have either knob. I lost both of them. Uh, that's a Chevy thing. You get about 100,000 miles on those window cranks, and <clears throat> you go to crank it, and they just pull right off. Thing runs its ass off. It's got a, a iron, you know, Chevy Chevy small block, and the 4L80, like, starts up and runs like a champ, but all the other shit's breaking on it. So I'll have a new van, which I will do a van tour of. That's been requested a lot. I've almost done it a couple times, but... I've never been able to get this van the way that I want it, and it's honestly kind of trashed most of the time. I'll have, like, uh, literal trash in there if there's no dumpster on site um, or equipment that I don't generally have generally have on there and, you know, jamming everything up in the back. But I'm going to switch out vans tomorrow. I'm, it's going to be nice and neat. I'm going to keep it that way, get it organized just the way I want it, and then I'll do a video about it. Um, other than that, I've gotten some questions about how this current crazy shit is affecting my job, and honestly, right now, it's not a whole lot. Um, I've been going to work every day. Right at this moment, our, our, our safety protocol includes getting our temperature taken before we pull into the job. There's a MERS right at the front gate with a little laser gun, shoots your forehead, and tells you if you are uh, free to pass. Uh, and then we have to have a mask and gloves on at all times. We have a hand-washing station uh, they're keeping up on the hand sanitizer, and there's a, a old guy laborer that just walks around with an HDX pump sprayer and sp has bleach water in it, and he comes behind everybody and sprays everything down with bleach, wa bleach water. Uh, he got our machine today. We I hopped off of the excavator, took a piss, and I I'm walking back, and I see him spraying the controls down. I got sat down, and everything smelled like bleach, but... I'm not complaining. They're taking uh, they're taking the proper precautions, and you know, construction y you easily could be a hundred feet away from somebody, or you got to be one of three guys all lifting the same thing, you know, shoulder to shoulder. So 
if we're allowed to work, we're going to keep working. I know that's not the case for everybody. Uh, my I, Anecdotally, everybody I know is good. They're getting unemployment or their company's currently paying them or they're working from home. I know that's not everybody's story. And I've heard some horror stories about how, you know, people are people are getting getting antsy like come on you know let's let's get this shit back on the road and uh i totally i feel for everybody that's going through shit right now i've been lucky enough to be essential even though i saw like a joke it was probably completely false but it was still it, it captured the sentiment of being in construction the past couple months and this guy shows picture he's they're re they're hanging new light fixtures at a strip club <laughs> yeah just essentially remodeling the strip club that's essential while they were closed down they i guess wanted to do some upgrades so i haven't honestly been working on any essential jobs i know certain states did shut down uh, non-essential construction but i've been uh fortunate enough to be essential so cool <laughs> but like i said the contractors are all taking a lot of precautions and i i feel safe at work and going out and uh, in Maryland, it's uh, if you're in public, you have to wear a mask or you're subject to fine. And I'm all for it. That's fine. I know everybody's ready to get this shit over with. Uh, it's just getting it's getting a little politically and, uh, the, you know, the people's sentiment. It's getting a little, you know, like I said, getting a little antsy and people are getting kind of fired up. I can't wait for it to be over, but it hasn't really affected my job. Let me know. Let me know how you guys are doing. What do you do? I know most people that subscribe or, you know, in some sort of trade or auto techs or just hobbyist. I know everybody's doing something that could be considered essential. But if you're not essential and you had a really shitty time, you know, let me know. Because like I said, all, all I've personally heard is people do, or people are doing okay. People are holding it together. So I think that's about it. Um... Oh, uh, workbench for the channel number four. I'm working on that right now. Uh, it said the shed, the old shed, the old basement, this garage, and this will be workbench number four. Uh, so I'm going to try to make some more videos. I haven't bought that many tools. Honestly, I don't like, uh, haven't had the opportunity or new tools to show off in quite a while. The, the videos will, will go thin if I don't have anything to do a video about. And I get tons of emails uh, about want me to send them me their Chinese shit, and I don't even respond anymore. I don't want to get, I don't want to, that's a pain in the ass. I don't want to get obligated to anybody or feel like I got to do something. This is the shit I buy. Also, um, Project Farm did a big ass scientific comprehensive knife sharpener review. And broke it down, like dulled them all equally and had the exact same test to test their sharpness. And a little old $40 Lansky system came in second. I think he had like seven or eight different systems. Um, what do you call it? The electronic ones and then some big fancy thing that came in like a Pelican case. That was like $900. That dude had those spent like two grand in this video. And I think the, I think the $900 one actually came in first. Maybe not. I don't remember which one was first, but this came in second. So say what you want about the box, but it does it does the trick. Other than that, just be safe out there. Hope everybody's doing good. Like I said, let me know how let me know what is going on uh, with you guys. This has been stressful. The same. Whatever. <laughs> so thanks for watching.